here are three of the biggest bang for your buck photo editing techniques that I've found. They're quick to do, easy to learn, and they'll instantly transform your landscapes to give them the wow factor like never before. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the three simple editing techniques that prove it doesn't have to be difficult to get standout results. The first one takes a popular editing technique which usually produces overcooked results and sets the proverbial timer correctly so it comes out of the oven perfectly and you end up looking like the Gordon Ramsay of photography. Maybe not literally, but you know what I mean. Now, the first step is to duplicate your background layer if you only have a background, or if you have more layers, then go to Select, All, Edit, Copy Merged, then Edit, Paste. Next, add a Gaussian blur to this new layer. Then change the blend mode to overlay. And from here, what you'd normally have to do is reduce the layer opacity to where it no longer crushes the shadows in your image. And this is where the common way of using this technique, known as the Orton effect, ends. Now the problem with this regular method is that when you reduce the opacity to fix the shadows, you also lose a lot of what looks great in the highlights. So here's how you can turn this overcooked effect into one that looks perfectly blended in just two more clicks of the mouse. Now if you're one of the 7,014 photographers who've downloaded my free Photoshop plugin at the time that I'm recording this video, then first just temporarily disable the Autumn Effect layer, click on one of these highlight buttons up here, then click down here to add a layer mask to the Autumn Effect layer. And what this does, it creates a luminosity mask and the result is that the effect remains nicely visible in the image highlights while no longer crushing the shadows. Now at this point you still might like to reduce the opacity a little bit but nowhere near as much as you needed to before the mask. Now if you haven't got it yet you can download my free plugin that I just used to do this from the link in the description and pin comment below this video. So this simple modification to the Autumn effect takes a common technique and improves it but the second technique that I want to show you is one that slipped under most people's radars. I assume because it's so ridiculously simple that it's hard to believe quite how amazingly it works. Now you can use it to enhance or even add from scratch a beautiful golden light in a sunrise or sunset shot like this. And when you do it well, nobody would ever guess how you did it unless they're already in the know. Even then it kind of just looks like something that must have been more tricky to do. So here are the steps. First, add a new layer to your image. And then with the brush tool active, Alt or Option, click on an area of the image where there's the light that you want to enhance, usually something very light with a hint of warmth. And if you don't have that in the image, then just sample a light peachy color, something like this, and then just brush the color on a low opacity with a large brush, wherever you want to paint the light into. Now, sometimes this is all you need, but other times it can look a bit artificial where the brush goes in the wrong places, like in this example where it overlaps in these darker areas in the foreground here. So to fix that, you can add a layer mask that again, restricts the effect to the highlights in the same way I showed you for the Autumn effect a minute ago. Just click a highlights button up here on my free plugin and then add a layer mask to the layer and it automatically adds it as a luminosity mask that restricts the layer's visibility to the image highlights and conceals it from the shadows. Then with this effect, you can either reduce the opacity like before to reduce the effect a little bit more or you might actually find yourself wanting to add a bit more hazy light to the image so you can just keep brushing into the main layer while the mask continues to restrict it all to just the highlights. This third super quick image enhancing technique doesn't involve any layer masking. It is a technique you've probably heard of and used before but you probably haven't used it like I'm going to show you how to now. Unless of course you've taken some of my editing courses where I've shown this technique then maybe you have seen it but Technique number three is one that makes your photo look more three-dimensional so that key subjects virtually pop off the screen or print. Take a look at this example before and after to see how I mean. Now in the before version, the image is fine, but here in the after version, look how much more three-dimensional it appears and how the main subject stands out more, but in a subtle way that doesn't feel over-edited. The technique itself isn't what makes it work. It's the thought process behind what and where you should brush with those dodge and burn tools, that's where the magic happens. Now you can use the dodge and burn tools or you can use the 50% gray layer dodge and burn method if you prefer. But for this example, I'll just use an empty layer set to the overlay blend mode and then brush into it with a low opacity black or white brush. So the key idea that makes all this work is that you want to be lightening 
the light sides of things and darkening the dark sides. For example, this here has a naturally light side and a naturally dark side. So I'll look to enhance that natural light by dodging the light sides and burning the dark sides. And then having made those broad strokes on the kind of the larger object as a whole, zoom in a bit and with a smaller brush, look for light and dark sides on the smaller details and basically continue the process. And the net effect when you toggle the layer off and on afterwards is that you can see how the on version has a lot more pop. Now, one thing to look out for which can ruin this effect is how easily you can overdo it. it it's very easy to actually go a little bit too far and you'll know when that happens because the brush strokes are going to become visible and obvious in the image. So I recommend playing with the layer opacity after you've finished your dodging and burning to see if reducing it a little bit can make it blend in more. Now, one extra little trick that's totally optional, but you can do it if you want, and it will minimize the chances of overcooking this effect. And that is to separate your dodging onto one layer and your burning onto another layer, and then add a highlights luminosity mask to the dodge layer and add a shadows mask to the burn layer. So just quickly, that would look like this. Add a new layer for dodging onto, change the blend mode to overlay, click a highlights button on the plugin, and then add a layer mask. That's your dodge layer. And then for the burn layer, we're just gonna add another layer, change it to the overlay blend mode, click a shadows button on the plugin, and then add a layer mask. And what this does, it restricts your dodging and burning to the appropriate tonal ranges. So it becomes less obvious if you accidentally brush into a light area with your dark brush, for example. Now my plugin does reduce the complexity of luminosity masking by probably 90% or more. But if you wanna start learning how luminosity masking works under the hood, then watch this next video.